If you see A-list supermodel working out, they're probably on one of these torture looking devices. If this device could turn me into a woman that makes more money than Tom Brady, yes, I'm going to try it. What's stopping us all from using this? It is so expensive. So this month I will be maxing out all my credit cards to see if this celebrity Pilates workout is worth us sacrificing never being able to put a down payment down on a house. Here's my starting point, purely for scientific purposes. As we all know, my beginner's era ended a decade ago, so the likelihood of me ever making progress in a month is next to none. But we will see if one month reformer Pilates can give me a better six pack than 10 years of resistance training. On my way to my first reformer's Pilates, I've technically done two Reformer Pilates sessions in my entire life. Taking away, I did a little Legree, but Legree is not Reformer's Pilates, and the Pilates girls come for me. I'm just at that level of like, I know what to expect, I know what we're gonna do, but like, I don't have the form dialed in, so it's gonna be rough. She's beauty and she's grace. She Day one, after repeatedly slamming the carriage against the wall and ruining the zen atmosphere, I realized the goal of this challenge is going to be to learn grace. Day number one, Pilates reformer. It went well. I can already tell how sore I'm gonna be. It seems so easy, but it was like nice to leave feeling good. The results I guess I'm hoping is more of just like posture correction. I have been having a lot of neck pain and lower back pain because I'm back in the office and I end up sitting like this. So what is reformer's Pilates? Well, according to the very scientific Google, Reformer was invented by Pilates founder Joseph Pilates. It is a bed-like frame with a platform on it called the carriage, which rolls back and forth on wheels within the frame. So the original Pilates was done on the Reformer, and now it has made many of changes that we are more likely to actually see. Not to be mistaken for the Mega Reformer, which is the one you will see at Legree, Solid Core, and that. Pretty much those are just not what's considered classical Pilates. A little bit. Okay, if I touch you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I want you to. Yeah, there you go. Something I've been chronically dealing with over the last couple of months is tension headaches in the left part of my skull and lower back pain on my right hand side, which has been my entire life. And it turns out it's because I am screwed the wrong way. Pretty much my entire life I played basketball and volleyball, which just means a lot of taking off my left foot and swinging with my right. And the other has just never had to do anything for over 25 years. I started to realize a lot of Pilates is about unwinding and I never understood that until I realized I was like, oh, I'm overly wound in one direction. It's to unwind me back. Class number three done and I kind of had an aha moment. The worst part about Reformer is the price. It is astronomical when you compare it to any other Pilates, yoga, spin. But in today's class, I was like, oh, that's why it's so much money. Because group classes, usually it's one trainer for 30 people. They're just viewing out random tips, but they're not really very seldomly concentrated on you. Pilates reformers, I notice, usually very small classes and very hands-on. And around. Good. It's okay for the pelvis to move a little bit. So it's less group class and more personal training, which is going to be a lot more money because it's one-on-one. -on -one. Like, I just noticed in today's class, there were so many times the instructor came up to me specifically and just kept giving me cues and helping me out till my form was perfect. Day four, I tried out a hero board class at House Concepts, which is a great, more affordable and accessible option to a reformer. You can buy one yourself. There's dupes on Amazon and also you can try and find a class in your area. Bonus, this one was Barbie themed. Whenever I start a challenge like this, I just like prepare to be broken and I was a little sore. I feel good. Like that? Mm, actually, Long arms. <laughs> yeah, you can stay on top. I think of the shoulders. Yeah, that's good. I'm headed to my last workout of week two. And interesting, I went and got a run assessment done yesterday just to see my running form, any imbalances I have. And she was asking me about my routine and I was like, yeah, I do weights and then runs, and then I do my mobility and I've been doing Pilates once or twice a week, she's like, perfect. Cause like I have just little 
imbalance in my hips it kind of causes like a little hip dip when I run and she's like you just have to work on the kind of strengthening and she's I was like yeah I've been doing Pilates she's like that is literally perfect for it so I'm always reminding myself I think we think of Pilates as like that's all you do if you want to become a Pilates girl if you want to look like the LA girls you just do Pilates nothing else and I was like I think Pilates is really designed as cross training as rehab as like a great thing that a pro hockey player could do, that your grandma could do. It's just work on mobility and strengthening a lot of those muscles that we neglect. Halfway through the challenge, and here's possibly the record for the world's absolute worst camera angle. So let's skip on to the next day. Time for a rapid fire Q&A over top of week three's footage that you guys submitted on my Instagram. One, is it good for building muscles? Yes and no. If you're someone who's done a lot of resistance training, you're probably at a level of progressive overload that it won't help. If you're someone who's done no resistance training, it does have some resistance so you can grow some muscles and it can help you engage muscles that you normally are neglecting. For example, like my right glute, which I, yeah, I squat and deadlift and glute bridge, but I never utilized it because my left one was too strong. Two, why is it so expensive? It's more hands-on. Just think of why a personal trainer is more expensive because it's just one-on-one. -on -one. It's usually one-on-three and the equipment itself is expensive. Typically a lot of the Pilates instructors have to take specific certification courses. With more certifications comes a higher price tag. Inhale, exhale, roll your head and your heart forward and up. For average cost, I don't think you'll find anything under $40 Canadian and they can go upwards of $250 a session. So... Yes, and I'm sure there's like $500 ones in LA I don't have access to. Five, do you already have to be in shape for this? Absolutely not. Just think you wouldn't have to be in shape to go to a physio because your lower back hurts. Same idea, this is great for someone who just has a desk job. This is great for a high level athlete. You wanna really think of it as mobility, strengthening, kind of rehab workouts. And yes, a dancer who has a lot of flexibilities look a lot more graceful at the start, but you don't have to be. What's better, mat or reformer, which will make you stronger? <sighs> Pros and cons, mat's gonna be more accessible. Anyway, can do it, you can find it anywhere, it's cheaper. Reformer, you're probably gonna get better results because of the equipment's a bit better, better quality trainers, which would make you stronger, kind of the equal. I just think there's a bit more logic behind the reformer. Cause what is even Matt Pilates at this point? It's literally just like anything on a mat. The term itself has been, no longer exists. Why'd you have to pay extra for a reformers class versus a regular fitness class at a gym? It is more one-on-one. -on -one. Think of it as less as a group class and more of personal training. I have a hyper-flexible low back and tight hips. Want to try for back pain? Thoughts? First, I'm not a physiotherapist. I can't tell you if it'll work or not, but for me personally, my lower back pain is from a weak and tight right glute. Yeah. Um, so it is definitely a benefit for me. The great thing is you could go to a reformer and they can assess you and let you know if it's accessible. That's a sign of a good Pilates studio is you go in, you're like, here's my injuries, here's what I need to improve on, and they design the workout around you. Good morning. Um, I won't be able to film today because I'm running super late because I mistimed my commute and I did berries right before. Hey, reformer is really giving me an appreciation for how our entire body's connected and one off thing can just be a ripple effect for everything else and just unwind myself because I'm just like this. I keep. In this, I made sure to not stop any of my resistance training, which I do two to four times a week, and not stopping any of my runs. This was not to swap out my cardio or resistance training. I did swap out a couple of mobility sessions and I did view this bit more of my stretching rehab sessions. Um, full confession, one of the biggest reasons, aside from money, I haven't done reformer is I was not a dancer. I have no grace. I played sports that were very rigid and hard and explosive. And so doing anything in this realm is very nerve wracking. Yoga was the first eye opening thing many years ago I got that just kind of got into that flow state and that feminine energy and all that kind of thing. It's very new to me, especially reformer is yo, know, you can kind of just hide in the back and no one really sees you in the start, but like reformer, it's like two other people beside you and I was like oh. oh my god this is gonna be so embarrassing and it was the first time I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I wasn't humiliated when I first put myself in the and now it's getting kind of fun to explore different ways of movements Today made me realize this is something not to cheap out on. 
if you're gonna do it I know there's other reformer studios that you can have 10 to 20 people in it and save a little bit of money I say don't even waste time with that for regular Pilates sure but for a reformer I feel you're getting a half-assed version so like just don't waste your money it's kind of like do it fully or don't do it at all because the benefit in reformer is that one-on-one -on -one attention well turn your elbows to the floor and bend them down to the spring of correcting posture and balances if you're like kelty i don't have 50 to 150 dollars for a session i'm like totally get it just don't just don't do reformer pilates in that case save your money because you won't get the benefit from doing the cheaper classes with 30 people i'm like now that is an absolute waste of time and money So after four weeks of the most expensive Pilates class I have possibly ever spent money on, what are the pros, cons, and my results? Pros, number one, it unwound me. I realized I have been chronically twisted clockwise my entire life, so they twisted me counterclockwise and I feel very neutral. Two, it was a nice moment with my body. I love my endorphins, I love sweating, I love that feeling strong and powerful, but it was just a nice moment to kind of like how meditation, you like check in, but I find this, yoga, all these things are really good of like, oh, I am tight in my right side. Be in tune with your body. Three, it was a good way to work on movement patterns I usually don't have access to. I do my squats, I do my runs, I do my mobility. It allowed me to do a lot of different hip movements in ways that I found was strengthening and like lengthening, lack of better terms, my movement patterns that I normally don't have access to. Hold on, try not to push into my head at all. Okay. Four, it was great rehab for my tight and weak muscles because that's what I've learned over the last few months, especially working out. I used to always just think if a muscle felt tight, it meant I need to stretch it. And I'm realizing a lot of times it means it's weak, so it could be tighter weak. And Pilates kind of allows to work on both. The cons. One, the money. It is crazy expensive. But I really started to view it as like, a, oh, this is like if I was going to the physio or a massage. And this is maybe a once a week treat kind of for me. This isn't like the main form of my workout. A good accessory to make sure I don't injure myself for my runs and weights. It isn't to replace my runs or weights. Two, the con is you still have to do weights and cardio. Like this isn't like, oh, I, all I gotta do is Pilates. And I think because Pilates has, is having a moment, people just think, I'm just Pilates girl. I'm like, <laughs> if you wanna be, that's cool. I just think for a lot of people's goals, they would find benefit in just doing it a couple times a week and it just be cross training. Cause it's not gonna get your heart rate up. It's not gonna provide a ton of resistance training, but it is a great, thing to slide in that routine. For accessibility, not everyone has access to it, not everyone can afford it. And the last con, I did an experience here in Vancouver, but I find Pilates studios tend to not be very inclusive. We all know what a Pilates girl is. It's the token, long lean, that girl we see on Instagram that's drinking her lemon water and her perfect set. And I feel it, I kind of fall into that category, but for me, like I play basketball, I have no grace. I don't move like that, I'm too loud. I've never felt comfortable. And then also I think of people who are of different ethnicities and different body sizes. It's very intimidating to go into space like that. So I will recommend The Well in Vancouver if you're here. Every time I went in class, every single person was different, different journey, different story, different point of their fitness journey, everything. And everyone got to enjoy this work up together and it was a very safe space which I find a lot aren't unfortunately and my results here was my form first time I ever tried reformer it's quite funny to see how uncomfortable and lost I was and then here I am at the end no I'm not perfect but you can just tell I'm so much more comfortable and in control and dare, dare I say dare I say graceful in terms of my physical appearance my ab definition and glutes remain the same and that's to be expected day 30 let's see if my glutes grew at all okay it was 34.8 here, which I think is like, if anything, a little smaller. It's under 35 inches, like 34.9. Pretty much it just shows it's not significant if it's just a little bit. Uh, that could have been simply the angle. What I ate last night, what I didn't, the time of the month. It's like I feel Pilates won't make your muscles really grow necessarily, but they give you the mobility and stabilizing posture things that allow you to do the things that 
grow your muscle more. Because I've been doing resistance training in some form for an, over a decade. But I am curious if I did this over six to 12 months, if it allowed me to gain so much more mobility and stability in my weaker muscles that it would actually allow me to make some changes when I paired it with progressive overload in weight workouts. I currently don't have any physical appearance goals. I'm quite just content with my body and just trying to progress to be, live a more healthier, happier, pain-free life. I will do before and after sometimes in these videos just simply if something does change or to kind of show that you can't really change that much in a month. Fitness does take time, especially if you've been training a long time. And that's normal. Do not get discouraged. Now I came in here already in shape. I'm aware of that. I do a lot of fitness things on this channel and I was a former athlete, so I wasn't doing this to get in more shape. But because I played sports, anyone who did, I have so many mobility issues because in essence, I spent 20 years only working certain muscles and not others being in weird positions because sports aren't always how you're naturally supposed to move. So I've pretty much for 20 years overworked certain muscles and completely neglected others. If you've ever even noticed, like it always looks like I'm slightly shrugging. It's not. It's just like my right side is significantly bigger than my left. And the results, I just feel like I'm evening out. I feel I have really bad rib flare. I feel it's going down a bit more. There's less pain in my lower back. Since week two of this challenge, I haven't had any of the pain in my neck. I just feel better. This is so cheesy, but if there's one thing that has drastically improved my quality of life is it's anytime I work on mobility. And I mean that strengthening or learning to move tight muscles or joints or whatever that is. It's going to be different for everyone. That's why I don't recommend because I could say do this and you could be the complete opposite. But this was amazing. I loved it. The only downside was like, it was very time consuming doing it three times a week. I didn't really feel more of a benefit than I would from doing maybe two times. So I definitely won't do it more than two times a week moving forward, but it's definitely something I'm realizing. And my mom and boyfriend yell at me all the time because I'll do these things for a challenge, feel so much better. And then I stop, I'll go see a physio for a month. I'll feel better. And then I'll stop because I'm trying to save money. And then I regret it because then I have to do emergency stuff and I'm in severe pain. It is definitely a luxury. If you're not doing it, that's fine. There's a lot of other other things which I will try to show on this channel. I see why the celebs do it. My God, if I could afford to do it more often, I would. But for me, the point of return kind of is like one to two a week and I will do it, but I'll probably fall off in a month because I'll look at my credit card statement and be like, ooh. Oh, but it was fun. It was fun and I enjoyed it. Hope you guys have a fabulous day. Go pet dog. Love you guys. Bye.